Hello there, thank you for staying with us and welcome to another edition of Channels Beam. I'm Victor Mathias. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, conducted by-elections in some parts of the country. However, certain issues that have plagued elections in the past still seem to be recurring. We will be examining these issues today on the program and also find lasting solutions to them as we look forward to future elections. But as always, before we get into all of that, let's take a look at trending social media topics in the past week. The NSARS hashtag took center stage after rumors of a second wave of protests spread. Authorities, including the Kogi state governor and the police, have since warned protesters not to go ahead, and the police stationed officers at strategic places in states where the protesters were allegedly going to gather. The Abia State Chief of Staff, Anthony Agbazwere, became the talk of the town after a video of him surfaced spraying new Naira notes on controversial preacher Chukwemeka Udumeje as his office. The governor has since suspended the official after pressure from social media users. Well, there you go. Those were some of the trends in the past week, but you can also be a part of the conversation from wherever you're watching around the world. Just tweet at us at Channels TV, at Channels Beam, at Victor underscore MBIDI. You can also use the hashtag Channels Beam as well as Electoral Reform. But joining us today to look at the topic of the day we have with us right here in the Lagos studio, Edward Israelide. He is a marketing communications consultant who comments on social political issues affecting Nigerians and how these impact our perception as a nation. Edward, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much for having me. Of so. course. Uh, we also have joining us Samson Itodo. He is the executive director of Yaga Africa and the convener of the Not Too Young to Run movement. He has 13 years of experience and uh, an expertise in elections, legal research and analysis, parliamentary strengthening, constitution building, and social movements. Uh, it's also a pleasure to have you on the program today, Samson. Pleasure. Indeed. Kicks out the conversation for us. Um, the just concluded by elections, I mean, um, it went on in some parts of the country, but uh, still yet some things that were noticed in previous elections again uh, happened. Uh, talking about voter apathy, you know, you know, and D-likes. Um, so how do we correct these anomalies that we record every time we have these elections? Is it for me, is that a question for me? Yes, please. Oh, I think that first, um, there are three things that are central to reversing um, this spot on out for elections. Um, one is, so long as government fails to perform its responsibility of providing for the welfare and security of the people, insofar as people um, don't feel, you know, the impact of government on their livelihoods, they're never going to show up at elections. And, and so democracy needs to deliver to the people. The second point is, the process itself needs to be transparent and credible to repose the confidence of people that their votes will count um, at the end of the day. Because it makes no sense for people to show up at elections um, and stand in long queues under the sun and the rain and, you know, politicians deploy talks um, to, to disrupt the process or suppress their votes. It makes no sense if at the end of the day, after voting, results are changed. So they need to have confidence that their vote will count. So we need to ensure we strengthen the system so it delivers on electoral integrity. The third point is you need a political party system that upholds the principles of internal democracy. You need a party system that doesn't exploit its members and its people and people who seek to run for office under their platforms. Because the huge campaign funding and, and charges that uh, parties um, charge to our aspirants also discourages people. So what you see is a recycling 
of the same leaders over the last couple of years in public office, and there are no new faces. Women are not part of the process, persons with disability. And so if you do these three things, to a large extent, you can reverse this trend of poor turnout um, of, of voters and elections. And if you talk about electoral integrity, technology, you know, can deliver electoral integrity if effectively deployed by the Electoral Commission I and was... the people you utilize those tools. Yeah, I was I was going to come to you on uh, you know the, the deployment of technology, but um, just hold on a bit. I'll, I'll come back to you on that. Let me quickly just get to hear from um, Edward. So I mean, he, you know, he kind of listed some of the things that you know he thinks can be done to reverse this trend. Uh, but something just happened, you know, in the in the emo uh, non senatorial, you know. Absolutely. So the party now was returned elected. That's because there were two judgments by two different courts that disqualified the two candidates that were supposed to, you know, be fielded by the party in that election. Mm. Um, so how do we get past this kind of um, judicial, let me call it interference, you know, for lack of a better term at this point in time? I, I wouldn't call it uh, judicial interference. I think it's just uh, political parties and political candidates trying their best to exploit the loopholes in our electoral laws. And uh, most times what happens is that on the day of election, <coughs> things can still change. Do you understand? Uh, you might end up thinking that you are voting for this candidate under this party. And uh, at the end of the day, maybe before the election uh, is called or after the election is called, you realize that another candidate has uh, been presented because there's a uh, court judgment and all that. Uh, I wouldn't call it a judicial interference. I think uh, it is very, very important, very, very critical that we like look at our electoral law, uh, like the electoral bill that is before the executive arm of government, I think it needs to be passed. The last uh, Senate did a lot of work trying to put that bill together, uh, but I think maybe because of uh, political uh, leanings and the like, they were not able to push it to presidential assent. So it's very important that those kind of things are prevented from happening. And uh, Samson also made a very important point, which is that if the citizenry, if the uh, electorate do not feel so much confidence in the system, if things like this happen, if they vote for Edward and then at the end of the day it is Victor that is presented because there's a uh, legal case going on, there's there a legal... There. So at the end of the day, they feel like their votes do not really count. And uh, that brings apathy. You then find situations where I was monitoring the uh, Lagos, um, uh, East, Lagos Central. East Central election and I realized that there was widespread uh, voter apathy. I saw a comment on Twitter where someone was saying that in a, uh, in a senatorial district with over a million people, the votes in total were less than 200,000 or 300,000. Yeah. So there's a lot of voter opportunity. Uh, so yeah, I was, I was yeah. also, it was, it's good that you brought about, you know, the Lagos East Senatorial District um, uh, case study because people thought that this was going to be a, a litmus test, mm -hmm. you know, for young people to, you know, make their voices heard like they did during the NSAS protest, which mm. as we hear now, you know, is beginning to have like a second wave. But if you look at it, I um, mean, all of the local governments, the percentage of the voters that were accredited was perhaps maybe like 5% of the total number of, uh, of voters or registered. or registered voters. So this apathy, again, I mean, I would have thought that it would have been a different thing this time around. But I mean, here we are with, with a different ball game. So, so I, I also feel like, uh, as we've seen with the NSAS movement, uh, after the after the protest, after uh, October 20th, uh, we saw that a lot of people sort of lost faith in the Nigerian system, do you understand? Uh, uh, people just generally felt that there was no point anymore, there's no point fighting anymore. And I think that might have influenced uh, the decision by so many, especially young people, to stay at home and not try to be a part of the uh, electoral system, do you understand, this time around. Because during the protest, we saw a lot of people saying, oh, we are going to show these politicians, we are going to uh, register, we are going to come out in our numbers and vote and all that. We saw a lot of people say, oh, we need to change the political establishment so, in so, Lagos. But, and, but, but what happens to the, you know, vote and protect your votes slogan or mantra? First of all... I think if you do that, whatever ill you have, 
you know, about the system would, would be, would be um, defeated. People need to first of all come out and vote. That's the problem. So it's 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 two it's two things. First of all, there's not enough sensitization on the part of INEC uh, because I expect INEC not to wait until there's an election before telling people to go out and vote, before telling people about uh, their civic duty to vote for uh, elected offices and all that. All right. I expect them to run it throughout the year as much as possible. But I, I think. If people do not, if people do not feel like they need to vote, shouldn't political parties also be part of that sensitization progress, uh, yes, process? Yes, but I, I, I really believe that it should be led by INEC. All right, let me uh, quickly uh, bring back uh, Samson, Samson into this conversation. Samson, so again, we're talking about uh, young people, and uh, if there is anything that you know, young people are kind of connected with at this moment is how how much they use um, technology, how much they infuse technology into things they do be it business, be it education, be it advocacy, like we've seen with the Not Too Young to Run, which you convened, uh, like we've seen with the NSAS protest. But in terms of now electoral processes, uh, of course, I know Yaga Africa was able to deploy a technology that predicted the results of the um, last two elections, governorship elections. Um, what are the tech solutions or, or, or technological uh, um, advancements can be put into the current system that we have to make things better? So there are a lot of electoral technologies that can be deployed. Um, one is the National Assembly will be conducting a public hearing on Wednesday, which is the 9th of December. And one of the provisions in the proposed bill um, is to confer powers on INEC, you know, to deploy electronic uh, voting um, for subsequent elections. I think that's a very positive um, development within our electoral process. It will deepen the integrity of the process. It will provide access. So I think electronic voting um, should be mainstreamed in our electoral process. And there's that process now. So Nigerians should engage the National Assembly to ensure that the law is passed. The second is on electronic transmission of results. If you look at what INEC did in the last two elections, where results from polling units were uploaded on the results viewing portal, it deepened the integrity of the process. So politicians became scared to undermine, you know, the elections by rigging um, at the ward coalition level or at the local government coalition level. Because once elections are concluded at the polling units, the results are uploaded. So this law needs to respond to that, confer legality, on electronic transmission. So you cut um, you know, this, this, mean, this um, point of coalition that, that are very weak, especially the district coalition. So electronic transmission. The third one is about voter registration. A lot of young people want to be able to register from the comfort of their homes. They don't need to show up at, um, at INEC offices. I always say that Nigeria is one of the countries where it's very difficult to be a registered voter. You have to show up three times. That's God help you. You show up to register. You show up to collect your PVC. You show up to vote. That's if you, if you are lost. And we need to review that. Can we, can we you know, introduce... Um, you know, um, an, an online registration of voters where people can, you know, log next website, yeah. submit their details. Um, people are opening across the world, people are opening bank accounts online and their cards are just delivered to them. These are technological tools that we can use, we can explore. But I must say that no matter the technology you deploy um, to sanitize the process, if you don't change your political culture, if politicians with their desperation still seek for political power and not play the game by the rules, they will look for ways to undermine whatever technology that you introduce um, to your electoral process. Well, let's uh, hope that that doesn't happen anytime soon. Of course, that's when um, all of that is being put into place. But um, I have to say thank you, uh, Samson, for joining us on the show today and sharing your thoughts. Thank you. You're welcome.